in the last 10 years, our success rates have been above 40% for take-home baby rate in most reputable in vitro fertilization centers. And so there is a high chance, actually, that this will work. That having been said, there's not a certain chance that this will work for everybody, and I think that's where the problems come. In vitro fertilization, as the name implies, is to remove an egg from an ovary and to fertilize it in a laboratory using either direct insemination, which we call intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or a technique where we actually approximate the eggs and sperm in a petri dish, which actually simulates natural fertilization and then watch for the development of an embryo. We wait anywhere from two to five days before transferring the embryo back into the uterus, and then we wait about five to seven days to know whether it implants. If it implants, there will be a positive pregnancy test, and about 80% of the time after that, there's a live birth. Age is clearly the single biggest limitation for success in IVF. And while there is some kind of age-related factors for male fertility, um, they're not as dramatic as they are for women. So we start to see a decline in egg quality in women starting around 35, even maybe sometimes before. And certainly by age 40, it's easy to see that there's a reduction in both egg number and egg quality. And by 45, we really don't offer in vitro fertilization. Most programs actually stop offering at age 42. For Melissa, it seems like she was concerned about the financial outlay and, and what the impact of that would be. Insurance does not always cover the procedure, uh, or it may partially cover the procedure. And the chances of having a normal baby with IVF are about the same as through natural conception. But in vitro fertilization itself doesn't seem to introduce very many hazards. There's a couple of conditions that we call imprinting disorders, but their risk is not very high. And all in all, I would have to say to you that I think this is as safe as conceiving naturally. This is Joy Service and I will be interviewing my grandma about IVF or in vitro fertilization. So grandma. I would like to ask if you know anything about IVF. A little bit. Will you give me a brief summary about it? Uh, this method is used to get sperm cells from men by means of injecting sperm cells to the egg of a woman. In this way, they can be able to produce a child. I'm not in favor for using in vitro fertilization for producing a child or conceiving because if this method will not be successful, the child will be the one to suffer the consequence. Gitna. Bakit? Pro and pro hindi yung kaano ang time. Hindi rin kaano. Pro. Kasi may mga mag-asawa yan na gustong gustong magkaanak pero hindi magkaanak. So, ang um, um, method, ang um, pinakamag-anong method dyan, eh, magkaroon yung parang test tube baby. Uh, wherein, ibang babae ang magbubuntis para dun sa mag-asawa, para magkaroon sila ng baby. Pwede rin anti, kasi parang kinawa mo lang refrigerator nung yung ovary ng isang tao so, na hindi mo asawa. Di ba? Tama, tama. Oo. Pero ang importante nun, magkaanak sila. Bali, antay ako sa IVF gawa na, na ano rin to sa religion. Sa religion, di ba? Sabi nga, kahit si ba ang katolika, narutulan din yung pag pag exit the limit ng technology. Well, hindi ko naman sinasabi na ano, yung tiratanggal mo na pagkakataong magkaanak yung mga hindi magkaanak. Pero kasi, nasa nature pa rin kasi ng tao yun eh. Natural na, lang, natural na nangyayari at saka gift talaga ni God yun. Mm, okay lang. I mean, sa gitna na rin. Kasi, why, why? Ah, may resulta. 
Um, dahil, yun nga, kagaya ng mga ano, yung hindi naman nagkakaanak. Kung gusto naman magkaroon ng sariling anak, di ba, kawawa naman sila. Tama. Yun lang. Thank you. What do I know about IVF? Well, first of all, I'm Dr. Mayuga, OB Gaine, fellow ng Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society. Okay, yung hindi ako reproductive endo. Actually, ang mga infertility workup, yung mga gusto magbuntis, yun know, that falls under ano? Yung IVF falls under the reproductive endocrinology. OB rin sila na nagsespecialize sa mga yung pagbubuntis, yung gustong magbuntis. Uh, kasi itong IVF, uh, it's a form of yung for couples na hindi ma makabuo naturally on their own. May, may mga couples na after a year na hindi sila makapagbuntis, we call that um, uh, usually, nagko-consult sila sa mga reproductive endo. And they want to know yung mga artificial form of uh, para magbuntis. No? And isa doon, yung in vitro fertilization. Merong, uh, yung in vitro, how did it start? Actually, hindi ko sure kung kailan yun. No? So, pwede nyo i-look up sa internet. Pero yung in vitro, kasi ang boy and girl, di ba, alam nyo ngayon, merong sperm, tsaka, tsaka ovum. Yung sperm ang gagaling dun sa lalaki. Usually, how they do that, nag aspirate sila. May na-aspirate from the sa genitals ng lalaki to get the sperm. Tapos yung sa babae naman, they also aspirate. Usually, ultrasound guided yan na may mga special uh, instruments na medyo mahal na ultrasound guy that is i-aspirate nila yun. Doctor, ano yung meaning ng aspirate? Ay, aspirate, sorry. <laughs> I, parang sinisip-sip. No? Ah, meron kang, meron kang ultrasound, uh -huh. no, hinihigop. No? Meron kang needle, fine needle. Parang yun sa injection. Ah. No? May mga special instruments na talagang uh, usually sa Singapore, madami yan. No? Doon, medyo mura. Dito sa atin, medyo mahal. So, merong instrument para uh, uh, syringe injection. Ah, okay. Okay. Tapos may, ano siya, mahaba. Siyempre, all of these ginagawa under sterile. Yung talagang malinis yes. na procedure, no? Sa operating room usually. So, may ultrasound yan. Tapos mag aspirate Yung ultrasound, yung parang machine oh, sa loob. Na parang makita yung, <coughs> yung organs mo inside. And then, sa ovary, sa babae, no, ultrasound yan, tapos mag-aspirate sila ng, ng egg. Tapos yun, yung sa male naman, yung sa sperm. Tapos nalagay nila yan usually, hindi ko actually alam kung, pero initially, sinesentrifuge nila yan. Yung, alam mo yun sa medtech yes. na machine para ma-separate yung, yung oh, ano, separate para yung sediments ibang may mga ganun, matanggal yung ibang dumi para makuha mo is sperm talaga and then the ovum um, um, egg tapos yun kukuha sila ang kailangan mo dyan madami millions of ano maaaring madaming sample from each couple kasi hindi naman yan very successful ibig sabihin hindi 100% uh, most of the time less than 50% ang talagang makakabuka. Pero in vitro, hindi ko alam ang statistics. Ha? Check nyo na lang. Tapos yun, sa kanila ilalagay in a special container. Tapos, ilagay nila. Tapos, sinisilip nila yan sa microscope. No? Yung egg. Tapos, ilalagay nila yan dun sa petri dish. Silipin nila sa microscope. Tapos, isasama na nila yung sperm doon. No? Hanggang sa mag mag-fertilize yun, magiging embryo na siya, di ba? Yun yung susunod. Eh. Pag nag-form yun, tapos nag-embryo na, yun na yung nilalagay dun sa mom. Sa mom. So, so, wala pong ano, involvement ng sexual intercourse? Wala. Uh, yun yung, ano, usually kasi yung in vitro, 
pag may mga like sa babae pag we nerk up yan ng OB na reproductive endo. Tapos minsan may nakikitang dikit-dikit, no? yung structures ng tube, oh, no? basta merong problema sa loob. Structurally, hindi makakapasok yung sperm. No? So, hindi talaga sila mabubuntis kasi hindi makapasok. Yung mga endometriosis, malalaman nyo yan, mga ganon. Tapos so, sa lalaki naman, minsan, pagka yung sperm count, kasi very important yung sperm count eh. Very important yung sperm count. Million dapat yung sperm mo para maka, maka-penetrate, di ba? Alam niyo yun. So out of the millions, isa lang talaga ang pwedeng papasok sa loob. So pagka may problema babae and lalaki, yan ang usually yung ginagawa nila in vitro. So sa labas ng katawan ng tao, fertilize yung yung egg with the sperm na galing mo sa So, yun yung from the labas sa kanila ilalagay dun sa womb ng mami. Uh, medyo mahirap, medyo mahal. Tapos, is it considered immoral? Personally, sa akin, hindi. Hindi naman. 